In this video, I want to show you how you load uh, layouts you create in TouchOSC onto your iPad or Android device. Now to do this, we need an application called TouchOSC Editor. This is a free application available off the website www.hexler.net. Once you've gone to this website, go to the Software tab and go to TouchOSC. Down on the page, you'll find the TouchOSC Editor software and versions of it available for both Mac, Windows, and uh, Linux. Now, I just want to mention one thing about the Windows version. Uh, the Windows version does require Java to operate, and it needs to be the matching Java. So if you run the Win32 version, you need Java 32-bit installed, and if you have, want to run the Win64 bit version, you need Java 64 bit installed. Most people, if they have Java, probably have the 32 bit version installed, so that's probably the safer one to download if you're unsure. And if neither of them work, you just need to go to www.java.com and install the Java runtimes so that the software will operate. So I'm going to go download the 32 bit version, save this to my desktop. Once this is downloaded, uh, open up the zip file and extract out the TouchOSC Editor software. This software doesn't need to be installed, so just place it somewhere, like I put it on my desktop, and then run it. So once TouchOSC Editor opens, the first thing we want to do is set it up for what kind of device we want to make an interface for. So up in the layout area, you can choose your device type, an iPad or an iPhone. Uh, if you're using an Android device, choose custom and type in the resolution of your screen, but I'm going to use an iPad. You can also choose what orientation the screen is, and up at the top is a zoom feature, so you can also see the entire uh, image if you won't fit on your screen all at once. To create buttons, just right click in an empty part of the interface here, and choose push button as your option, and this will create a button that you can then assign with properties up at the top, like where it's going to be located and what the size of the button is. So if I want to make this 100 by 100 pixels, maybe a gray color, uh, or a purple color. As you can see, I can just change it and it updates right away. Once the button is selected, below that, you've got controls as to what this button is going to be assigned to do. So we want to assign it to a MIDI uh, parameter. So we're going to select MIDI. We need to enable it. And then under type, choose note as the type of uh, button it's going to be. And this is where we then assign each button with a channel and a note number. Now each um, button should be unique. It should be its own channel and note. You have 16 channels available and each channel has 128 notes that you can use. So that's 2,000 buttons that can be assigned in one interface. Uh, we don't care what the note itself actually is. We're just concerned about the number next to the note. So if, I, if this is going to be channel 1 button 0 and I make a copy of this and make another button Button. I'm going to make this next one channel one, uh, note one, and so on with each button. Uh, and that way they can all uh, trigger individual functions inside the TriCaster. If you want to put labels on this, uh, just right click in here again and you can see there's a label vertical and a label horizontal. Just choose the appropriate uh, type that you want, uh, position that where you'd like it to be on the screen. And again, you can change font size, you can change what the button is going to say, uh, maybe you don't want it to have a background, uh, change the color of the button, all the types of stuff so you can make a, a nice looking button in there. If you want multiple lines of text, you just use multiple labels on that button to get it positioned correctly. Now, if you want to use one of the new text supplied templates, um, just open those up in here. So I'm going to open up the, uh, the TriCaster one here. And in here you can see we've already pre-configured everything for you. All the buttons are all assigned, they're all ready to go. So to load this on your iPad or Android device, just click the sync button in the uh, top of the TouchOSC editor software. This will start broadcasting out that uh, there is a a layout to be loaded and now we can go into our iPad and so we can see our iPad display here. I'm going to open up TouchOSC and to load this just click the uh, little uh, button in the uh, upper right corner then click where it says layout and then at the top where it says add tap there and in a second it should find the name of your computer that is broadcasting out uh, these layouts from Touch OSC Editor. So you can see there's the name of my computer. I just tap it. Now I happen to have this layout already loaded on my iPad, so it's asking if I want to replace it. The first time you load a layout, uh, it's not going to ask this because there's nothing to replace. So I'm just going to say OK, load that layout. That imports it in. And now in this list on here, uh, we can find our layout. The one I happen to load was TriCaster 8000 Advanced Edition Layout. So I'm going to select that off the list. 
And once you do that, you're back to your first settings screen. Click the Done button in the uh, upper right corner, and now that layout is loaded and ready to be used. At this point, uh, you can load the macros if they're uh, designed to work with this layout, or if you're building something from scratch, all you need to do is go into your TriCaster, uh, go to the macro you want to assign, and uh, click a, a trigger on it, and then tap the appropriate button inside of TouchOSC to assign it, and after that, it will be assigned, and tapping that button again will trigger that macro to run.